Okay, so we've arrived at Pick and Pull. Made it one piece of several. Um, but this is the car we took. It's a Corey's Daily. Tell us and, uh, a little bit about it. So I um I, I don't know if we're going to post it or not, but I used to have a oh, uh, 2011 uh, Impreza. It was uh, an auto tragic. It was the first car I ever learned anything on. Um, it was a show car. It was a, we'll, we'll, we'll put air quotes show car because you know, it's the only show thing. It, it was the thing that taught you a lot to let you know now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so at the end of its life, when I got the STI, I was like, I don't need two low cars. I'm gonna lift it. So I lifted the Impreza, um, got me into the off-roading scene, uh, got me into, you know, hey, you know, how to, how to take these cars and jack them up and not waste through axles and stuff like that. So um, that car got T-boned. Uh, I was looking for a new car. I was like, hey, I want, I want something with a little bit more room. I want something with uh, the uh, ability to have aftermarket support because there was basically none for the Impreza. So I went with the same year in Preza because I can swap some of the parts. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the same year Forester, uh, rather. And uh, then... And I was able to swap the wheels, uh, some of the driveline components, some of the suspension arms, uh, stuff like that. Um, it's currently lifted on... Um, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, yeah. race, uh, race land, um, lift, uh, basically the subframe space, all that good stuff. The, and... Um, uh, it has all the uh, supporting suspension um, arms and stuff just so that you can correct the alignment. Which um, is a major issue with the... Oh yeah. It, so when you lift these, the rear for some reason goes more to the front. You can see it a little bit right right here, but if you don't look too close, it looks almost centered. Uh, I was also able to keep the wheels, you know, uh, just some of, the, some of the good stuff that came off of the old car. Um, she does great off-road. Uh, I usually stay auto for off-road stuff just so that... Um, you don't burn the clutch out. I don't, not only that, but there's also a... Um, uh, we'll, we'll call it a 50-50 lockup when you put it in first. And uh, it, dis it distributes the power a little bit better across the front and rear wheels. Um, and yeah, uh, she, she's an awesome off-road race. We're about to walk in. We're gonna go get some stuff and fight. Or some stuff, we'll see what happens. So, yeah, we walked around to like four or five different cars that uh, would have been good candidates because the drive line's the same, and uh, all of them have cut drive shafts. Uh, Very unfortunate. I don't know why, uh, you know, you can go around and cut a drive shaft, uh, it's pretty easy to rip them out, and the plugs that you know, most people can buy to you know, resell transmissions and stuff. And stuff. Uh, they're, they're pretty cheap, so the rip up, the kind of drive shaft that moves out on the money it just doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. And obviously, you know, it's, it's a bummer because I was looking for one. But uh, it is what it is. I'm gonna have to look online and try to buy one or you know, see, if, uh, see if somebody has one on a, on a part of it or something. So, unfortunately, nothing here, but we'll, we'll, we'll find one. Yeah, so we went around to, what, like five cars? Yeah. About five cars. Uh, we checked some older ones, newer ones, whatever the case was. And they're all just cut, which is weird. Um, no transmissions. I don't think that has anything to do with it. Because even the ones with transmissions have uh, cut ones. Or, like, this one, for example, has a cut control arm, which is just weird. Um, they don't even let grinders in. Like, so yeah, I don't, I don't so it must be it. from them cutting it, which is like, strange um but got this little hawkeye i got the steering wheel bezel like that so now we head back and do I'm not sure what all right so good news yes so i called over to a local parts store um they have one out of uh, another 09 forester which is what this is um, and they have it for a hundred bucks which is a lot better than 200 in shipping so i'm uh when i go pick it up i'm gonna make sure that there's no new joint play or, you know, any carrier or any play. there shouldn't be you know most people don't rack on these uh, on these forsters so 
hopefully all is good and you guys will see me replace it today. That one's already taken out, so yeah. The, unfortunately, the Big junkyard, ups. yeah, the junkyard we go to or the one we're about to go to, they don't keep them jacked up like on this place where they have them all on steelies. So that's it. So we're back. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Take two. So, um, yeah, they did have the drive shaft. Um, they, I, I checked the, the play. Um, the most minuscule amount of play um, in the carrier bearing piece. Um, it's not a huge deal. Uh, I, I, it's not new, and then if we needed no. new, it's doable. It was a hundred bucks. If, you know, if I played a gamble with a hundred bucks, and I win. Awesome. If not, it's a hundred bucks. I'll just go buy a cheap eBay one or something. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, it's a good day. Either way, I'm not too worried about it. We're uh, we're gonna attempt to replace it today, and uh, you guys will see that. So I'm pretty excited for for just that. So. You guys will learn how to replace a, um, a drive shaft on um, basically any Subaru. I mean, they're pretty much all the same. Yeah, except um, when you got to fight with it <laughs> in like the summer. Yeah. Uh, so when we were putting mine in, we, we just had the order of things messed around. So we put the trans in, then we put the rear diff in, and then we were trying to put the axle in, but we, we just had to shuffle that around a bit. Um, and just so you guys see that we actually got the part this time, don't right mind here. the mess. Don't mind the mess. I mean, it's it's a daily. Like, it does its job. Serves its purpose. Um, we're uh, we're gonna fuel up, um, and then I think it's a half hour trek home, and then we'll uh, we'll start back up again. But for you guys, it'll be, probably be a second. Yeah. So we're just gonna go there, and then we gotta go scoot on the highway, and we're good. So we are back at the garage. Um, Corey just pulled his SDI out, and he's gonna be pulling the Forster in, so we can get a head start on the drive shot. Draft shaft should take us about uh, about a half hour, maybe an hour, if that. He said he did the drive shaft about a month, maybe more ago, so everything still should be loose and be able to get it out at least, because you know how New England is. Um, but we're going to get started on that. Hopefully it takes us about an hour, maybe half an hour, and then uh, see you guys. You whip up my appetite. So, uh, we're back. New drive shaft. Old drive shaft. New to me drive shaft. <laughs> um, we're... I already jacked up the car. Uh, it's a pretty high car, so you can't use the low jacks that I use for the SDI. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do, I can't remember off the top of my head if the uh, uh, if the whole assembly rotates uh, while it's in park. I don't think it does. But what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to uh, get some of the bolts free. And if not, I'll have to throw it in neutral and spin the spin the assembly and get the other bolts. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try to do right now. Uh, once I can break all those bolts free, I'm gonna go for the carrier. Uh, there's two bolts on the carrier. I wanna say they're either 17s or 14s. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but once you pull the carrier off, you can pull it right out of the transmission. I'm hoping I don't lose any like diff fluid or anything like that, but uh, we're, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna Try to get her done. Can you try to go what? Is that? Right here? Well, I just dropped a nut. Yeah, Is that it? Look at the throw. Uh, I see these two right here. Oh, there's two nuts? There's two right here. Oh, sick. Okay. Alright, so we just undid all of the nut and bolt combos. They look like this. Um, and you can kind of see some of the lifty, lifty stuff there. Just don't mind the rust. Yeah, <laughs> we call that seasoned in New England. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, pepper. <laughs> so we got just four of these, and then up, we got these two carrier bolts. And up front, what do we have, Corey? Um, it just pops out, just, right? It's just a spline into the transmission. Okay, so that just pops out right here where he's spinning it. Um, 
So this should, we should make light work of this, honestly. Yeah, this honestly should not take very long. Oh, yeah. No one's going in. I should call her. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we got the bolts. We're not lined up. Oh, are we lined up? What's this hole for? Nothing? Uh, I don't think so. Interesting. Uh, okay. I'm not a lefty, so bear with me. Oh my god. I got you, bud. Alright, there we go. I got it. Alright. Aww. Uh, Is it started? Yeah, yes, let me yes. see. Alright. Uh, I'm zipping her in. Alright. Milwaukee. Sponsor us. <laughs> Lined up on the carrier. Oh, what? Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> so now we just gotta line it up there and we are Gucci. Yes, sir. They're all hand held on or hand, hand tight. Uh, we cinched down these already. Yep. Uh, the spline's already in the transmission. We're not dropping any, so that's good. Yep. Um, now it's just tighten these guys up. We're gonna use a pry bar to hold it because it does free spin yep. if the rear wheels are up. So, um, I just gotta get on that part real quick. Yeah. Now, we're we're making great we're making great progress. I'm just gonna move this, you know, massive dong forward. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, line me up, Scotty. I'm already starting over here. Probably flip this crowbar. Yes, that's good. All right, let me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, push it towards me. Watch out! All right, there we go. to the face. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> As before when we were doing the uh, six-speed swap on Pedro's Baja, I am filming with one hand while I have one on the crowbar, so we're trying our best here. And if anybody comments that I can be a hand model, you're wrong. No, he definitely can. Like, <laughs> you see that? You see that hand tattoo, people? Pretty hand. I got the sausage wings, pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're heading on to the last one that's right here. Oh, sorry, he was trying to show him with the crowbar. Right here. I even could just hold this with my hand, though. So I'm gonna do that for this one. I don't know how strong my left arm is, but we're gonna find out. Are these torques a spec, bud? Mm, yep. <laughs> my, uh, my hand skill tells me that it's about three Aga Duggas, and uh, she's good. <laughs> so I we're, think we're done. Right, so yeah. that, we made it light work like at least 10 minutes. Like that was it. Oh, we're just gonna get all this out. <laughs> and then we're gonna, I'm assuming we're gonna take a test hit around the blocker. At least get up to street speed. Um, just for you guys that are out there, try, if, you, if you find this video like trying to try to diag, I, one of my biggest problems is that you'll watch a video, you know, you'll watch somebody fix something and then they don't show you what actually happened, or they don't show you the whole process, or they don't explain anything. And we so, we tried to show you as much as we could. Yeah, but, you know, we're under a car. Trying yeah, to, it's like, tough. Out. It's, it's tough. a little hard. So, um, what basically uh, the symptoms were? 
So I noticed that, um, I, I explained it a little bit earlier, but uh, you know, on the highway and stuff, it was shaking while under power and getting off power. So um, it, was a, it, was, uh, it was shaking as though it were a, a wheel bearing. So I took care of my wheel bearings uh, yesterday. Um, they weren't toast. Uh, I had a lot of word noises in the front. They went away after a wheel bearing, so I didn't need wheel bearings. Um, but for this guy, I was still noticing like a, um, a, a, a nice under. vibration or shape underneath me as well yeah. as in the rear. Under um, and under load, right? Under load and off load. So, yeah, that, that's um, what I meant. <laughs> so there's three parts to this dry shaft. Obviously the spline, uh, so four actually. So the okay. spline, uh, isn't in the same you have a U joint here. Yep. You have you have a carrier and then a new, another U joint up here. Um, the U joints are usually what go. Uh, you can have a bad carrier bearing. The carrier bearing knows it's usually going to make a, a, a whirring sound, but it's going to be all the time and it's going to sound like a scream or a shriek. Um, I didn't have that, so I know it wasn't a carrier bearing, uh, which led me to believe. Uh, the U joints. So when we pulled this one, this one here is the rear U joint. Yep. If you see here, that is too much play. That was causing the vibration. So yep. um, we pulled one out of a junk car. I don't know how long it's going to last, uh, especially with me doing off road stuff and, and stuff like that. Well, it's so, to get you around. So that, you know, it'll, it'll get me around for now. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. And, who knows, you guys might be seeing uh, another upgrade video with a car compressor garage shaft or something like that. So. Not on this one though. Yeah. Not on this one on the SCI. Because we all want that for our turbo ones. <laughs>